let's dissect a little deeper into it sure. because you've done many other works around success, about you know the road to success, etc. At the end of the day, is there uh, a growing sense that people are very transactional, even when they read a book like that? They want uh, the steps to success. That they, they become so unidimensional because you become ambitious and aggressive and all of that that you suddenly only want your easiest way to success. That the humaneness of a lot of what you're trying to say kind of gets missed. Well, there's a lot in that question. <laughs> there's almost a statement as well as a question. But I think you're partly right. I think that there are a lot of unidimensional people out there who've gotten so focused on success, meaning material success, financial success, fame, power, that they are missing parts of their life. Family, love, recreation, fun, spirituality, emotionality, etc. So basically, I, I've written a book called The Success Principles because I was very successful and I wanted to share what I had learned over the years with other people so they could be successful as well. I mean, uh, when you, you know, if you, if you learn to fish and you love it, you want to turn other people onto fishing, right? So for me, I wanted to share what I had learned about how to be successful and I'd studied a lot of successful people. I eventually interviewed over 750 of the world's most successful people. Generals in the army, successful politicians, top business people, successful authors, people that have written platinum songs, you know, for uh, Michael Jackson and people like that. And I was looking for, is there a common set of principles and strategies that everybody seemed to use? And I found that there were. You know, some were particular to a person that didn't mis maybe go across all things like athletics and sports and musicians and money and all that. But there was a set of principles. I identified 64, that's a lot. I don't expect anyone to master that in a year. It <laughs> takes about three years to master these. But there are a set of principles that if you practice them, whatever your profession, whatever your goal, they will help you accelerate your success and help you get where you want to go. Okay. I'm going to make the same cardinal mistake that I uh, you know, accuse a lot of people of being unidimensional about success. But for our audiences uh, yes. who would like to have a, a glimpse into what uh, you know, it takes to be successful, what are the cardinal principles? And uh, is success at one level also about uh, looking beyond yourself and that limited goal that you have? I used to define success as being able to produce any result you want. So if it's to be famous, if it's to make money, produce a movie, write a song, write a book, invent something, you know, win a medal in the Olympics. If you could produce that result that you wanted, that was called success. I've changed my definition in the last five years to success is fulfilling your life's purpose. I believe that everybody has an inborn purpose that is supported by the talents that you've been born with. You have core geniuses. You know, some people's core genius is mechanical. They can fix anything. Some people's core genius is musical. You know, they can just listen to something and start to play it immediately. If you fulfill your purpose, you're happy. One of my friends said, you don't want to get to the top of the ladder and find out it was reading against the wrong wall. You know, you're, you look successful, That's but you're not, you're not happy. So some of the basic principles are know what your purpose is. There are many techniques for finding that out. Take 100% responsibility for your life. Don't blame other people for why you're not successful. You are the one who's creating it. Number two, three, decide what it is you want. Most people never sit down and say, where do I want to be five years from now? In every area of my life, not just career, not just financial, but what do I want my relationships to look like? What do I want my physical body to be experiencing? What do I want in terms of recreation, fun, and happiness? What do I want to be experiencing in terms of making a difference in the world? What do I want to own in terms of house, car, jewelry, clothes, etc.? So if you look at all of those areas, I would find seven areas, and you decide what does success look like there for me, and it's different for everybody, now it's becoming, how do I get there? How do I set goals? Most people don't set goals. We know that only 3% of people in the developed world set measurable, specific goals for themselves for the end of the year. I asked a group last night in Dubai, how many of you have written measurable goals? And these are successful people. Maybe. 10, 15 percent of the hands went up. So the 700 people, the successful people that you looked at, were, were, were they people with very specific goals? Well, when I say they're successful, I'm saying they're not as successful as they could be. Okay. And so, you know, they know better. They've read the books. You know, they come to seminars and they're still not doing it. Research shows that 3 percent of the people own 90 percent of the world's resources. Research also shows that 3 percent of people are goal setters. Now, there is a correlation there. So basically what you want to do is learn how to set measurable specific goals. Not I want to lose weight, but I will weigh X number of kilos, in my case 80 kilos, <laughs> by a certain date. Okay? 
uh, not I would like to be a movie star, but I will have a supporting role in a movie by this date, this time of day, you know, whatever. So it has to be specific, how much by when. And most people don't do that. They just have vague intentions. I'd like to live on a house in the ocean. No, I want a 6,000 square foot house in Goa on the ocean by this date. If you do that, and then you use visualization, you visualize it. See, we talk about visionaries. Gandhi was a visionary. Steve Jobs was a visionary. Michael Dell, Bill Gates, Walt Disney. They had a vision of what they wanted. Everyone has the ability to be a visionary. Simply envision what it is you want. If you spend two to three minutes a day with your eyes closed, envisioning your, your vision, your, your, your ideal life, what happens is you program the subconscious mind to actually come up with solutions. It's like programming the GPS system in your car. You don't have to know how to get there. The GPS system will tell you. Your subconscious is as creative and powerful as any GPS system in the car, but you have to know how to put the destination in. But that's fascinating, Jack, because this, what, what, what we are talking about, and before this interview, I, I wouldn't think that you would speak like this, but it seems to be a mixture, amalgam of behavioral science, a study of, of modern corporate structures, etc., yes. where you work, yes. and a, a huge dollop of spirituality, because that's exactly yes. what uh, scriptures here say yes. about how the power of the mind has not yes. even been, uh, you know, possibly tapped, and you can be whatever you want to be. Yes. So, in a sense, do you draw a lot from from I, that aspect? I do. I'm very spiritual, and so I live my life as if there is guidance that comes to me. I call that the, the uh, composer. Then there's a director called my will. I need to then direct my body, my mind, my emotions, my actions to actually play the music, if you will, of what I have received from the composer. These are the instruments down here. So that basically, if I'm aligned with my life purpose, and then let's use all of Western management science. Let's use all of neuroscience. Let's use all of psychology. Let's use all of the best understanding of how to manifest a goal in reality through action, you know, if, if, you, if we wanted to make a distinction in the, historically between India and America, America has been very action oriented with a lot, a lot of spirit. India has had a lot of spirit without a lot of, uh, missing some of the action. So we put these two together, it's amazing what one can produce. So basically, yes, it, it's, it's, a, it's an amalgam of all of that. I have studied, I've read over 4,000 books in management, science, financial investment, uh, psychology, spirituality, parenting, you name it. That love is the answer. There's nothing more important than love. If we run a company from love and we wanted to serve people rather than just make money, we'll make so much money it's ridiculous.